Why is this image creepy? I mean, it looks like a human, but it's not. Let's take it a step further. Why is this thing creepy? What exactly makes us feel unsettled when coming face to face with something that is almost human, but isn't? In today's video, we'll be talking about the uncanny valley, the flashed face distortion effect, and the visual perception theories. Also, thank you to Astrigal for suggesting this video topic. The Uncanny Valley So, the Uncanny Valley is a phenomenon introduced by Masahiro Mori in the 1970s. It's used to describe the relationship between a human-like object and the emotional response it evokes in people. The average human has two eyes, two ears, a nose, a mouth, eyebrows, and hair. But why does this image look normal, and this one just looks like something straight out of your nightmares? That's because what we're looking at is almost human, and our minds can recognize that. If we take a look at this chart here, we see that it's using two scales, familiarity and human likeness. We're very familiar with stuffed animals and industrial robots. However, the closer the object imitates humans, the closer they reach the uncanny valley, a state of mind that makes us extremely uncomfortable because we don't know if what we're looking at is a threat or not. All we know is that they're almost human. Masahiro Mori wrote an essay all about the uncanny valley and goes into detail on what exactly exactly makes us feel uncomfortable. For context, Masahiro was a Japanese roboticist, most known for his research in humans' emotional responses to non-human entities. The essay was written in Japanese, but has been translated to English. In the Effect of Movements section, he states, For example, one robot had 29 pairs of artificial muscles in the face, the same number as a human being, to make it smile in a human-like fashion. According to the designer, a smile is a dynamic sequence of facial deformations, and the speed of the deformations is crucial. When the speed is cut in half in an attempt to make the robot bring up a smile more slowly, instead of looking happy, its expression turns creepy. This shows how, because of a variation in movement, something has come to appear very close to human, like a robot, puppet, or a prosthetic hand, could easily tumble down into the uncanny valley. Movement is a great part of the uncanny valley. It's one thing to see a creepy robot, but if that dude blinks at me, bruh. I'm dipping the fuck out of there. Our minds are set to recognize that movement coming from an object is most likely alive. A caterpillar, a dog, a bird, a fish, your Uncle Jose. But this sensation of eeriness runs through us when we see a human-like robot. Now, why? Why do we feel this way? There's not really a specific answer. This is just a phenomenon that everyone seems to agree on. But many people theorize that the reason us as humans have this sharp emotional ability to recognize other humans is because maybe at one point, recognizing other humans was a living necessity. Again, that's just a theory. No, <laughs> not a game theory. Or maybe we could be using that in the future. I don't know, maybe 2025 there'll be some aliens coming down to earth that look just like us. But thanks to our uncanny valley senses, we're gonna be able to be like, that fucker is an alien, bruh. Arrest him. I don't know what we would do. <laughs> so. How does a roboticist or an artist avoid the uncanny valley? Well, Masahiro Mori explains that this can be greatly avoided by not combining robots and humans. Many problems will be faced, including that of false smiles. When robots seem disingenuous smiling simply because they don't have all the muscles our face does, and their movements are far more coordinated than ours. We've talked enough about the uncanny valley. Now let me give you some specific examples. Tara the Android. If you have watched previous videos on my channel, then you might remember us talking about a video called I Feel Fantastic. <laughs> The video began gaining popularity in the 2010s due to being extremely creepy. The video depicts a female robot singing with a text-to-speech voice. Since this is the internet, rumors started spreading that the creator of the video was a murderer and other weird stuff, but no. Just another classic internet rumor. The bot was created by John Bergeron in 2003, and multiple music videos were made. It just so happens that I Feel Fantastic was re-uploaded onto YouTube either by him or another person, and it went viral. It's obvious the creator was going for an unsettling vibe with the use of the robot, dark synths, odd voice, and overall disturbing atmosphere. Visiting androidworld.com slash prod68.htm will lead you to a buying page, where apparently you can buy a DVD with five three-minute songs by Tara. I mean, they have a working PayPal link, but in all honesty, you're probably not going to get what you ordered considering the website was created in 2004. Medal of Honor Warfighter Medal of Honor Warfighter is a video game developed by Danger Close Games released in 2012 for the 360, PS3, and PC. Though these aren't physical robots, they do create very unsettling avatars, resulting in the uncanny valley. Let's take a look at this cutscene. So you picked a name. Tom wanted Michael, but seeing as we're having a girl, that didn't work. <laughs> well, keep Michael in your hip pocket. That way when... Isabella. Oh, beautiful. When Isabella shows up with her cute friends, Michael can take his pick. Honey! <laughs> what? That's how I met you. God bless older sisters. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. 
Okay, I'll take that as a chance to hit the ladies. married to that man for 22 years. And one of the things I've learned that some of the other wives didn't is that it's better to have them happy than to have them safe. Now, what's the difference between these player models and player models in a game like GTA 5? Well, GTA 5 had a far greater budget, which meant they could hire actors, not voice actors, in motion capture suits and in general afford better technology. I don't mean to be a Rockstar fanboy, but Rockstar always goes all out when it comes to their models' facial expressions, such as LA Noir, where a major task in the game is to read other characters' expressions to tell if they're lying or not. They achieve this with facial scan technology, which is also meant to skip over the Uncanny Valley because their characters actually look good. On the other hand, Hand, animating 3D characters by hand, or at least without a big budget, and trying to make them look hyper-realistic can not only lead to an ugly design, but very awkward movements, specifically in the hair, eyes, and head. I feel I should say this again, this is a phenomenon, not a fact. I'm sure there's a handful of people out there that are scared of Trevor Phillips because he looks like the Uncanny Valley, but the game made $1 billion three days after its release day in 2013, so... Probably not the majority. Off topic, but as a toddler, I was always afraid of the Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. Specifically, their eye movements. Like, stop blinking! You're not supposed to blink! You're a robot! But now that I'm older, I actually invented a piece of body protection that actually scares the Chuck E. Cheese animatronics and lets them know to not fuck with you. It's the Earl hat! Look at that! It's the Earl hat! We also got the I don't exist sweatshirt! But what's that? You don't like pastel colors? That's completely okay. We also got the black Earl hat. In case you want to pull up to your school, you know, let people know that animatronics can't fuck with you. <laughs> Blue hat also exists. We also got trucker hats. And my personal favorite, the beanies. But yeah, that's enough of the self promo. If you guys want to see all the items of my new brand Earl, make sure to click the link in the description or go to EarlDoesn'tExist.com. Now let's head over to the next Uncanny Valley example. Telenoid. Let's talk about the thing in the thumbnail. Here in the US, we have Alexa. In Japan, they had Telenoid. There is one, one question I, I would like to ask you about the eye gaze problem. You mm. know, video conferencing system we had had in 20 years mm. and in the, in the phone market too, but people aren't using it because... Created in 2010 by Hiroshi Ishiguro, Telenoid was a telecommunications avatar which meant that when connected to your phone, it would mimic the other person on the line's facial movements and their voice would come out of the robot to quote, make the call more enjoyable. The eyes follow you around and the Telenoid is also 31 and a half inches tall and has short limbs in order to make it huggable. Yep, so if you get horrible news and you're receiving it through a Telenoid, all you gotta do is pick it up, hug it, and start crying. And then probably crying even harder, you're hugging a fucking telenoid. The whole idea was very non-ideal because the other person had to use a webcam and a specific software in order for the telenoid to work. So if you got a telenoid, you would literally have to tell all your friends, hey, you guys should buy a webcam and also download a specific software. No one's gonna do that. This was supposed to be the next big invention, which would replace video conferencing softwares. But I guess the researchers forgot that FaceTime exists. If you want to get your hands on one of these bad boys, the price starts at $8,000 for the consumer version and $35,000 for a research version. The flashed face distortion effect, otherwise known as the alien faces illusion. In front of you are faces that will begin to change semi-rapidly. I'd like you to stare at the cross in the middle. Keeping your eyes focused on the cross, you should begin to notice that the faces become distorted and begin to have non-realistic facial features. This video is not edited. Every image is normal. This is the flash face distortion effect, aka FFDE. But why do these images become alien-like? This is because our brain is trying to fill these gaps through peripheral vision using our memory. Obviously, it has a hard time doing that, and the flickering of the images doesn't help it at all either. Our brain does its best to detect faces, which is why we see faces on random objects. This part of the brain is called the amygdala, a section of our brain that is commonly thought to form the core of a neural system for processing fearful and threatening stimuli, including detection of threat and activation of appropriate fear-related behaviors in response to threatening or dangerous surroundings. At the end of the day, the FFDE is a phenomenon based on our peripheral vision facial detection skills, since our brain just likes to assume that all faces are normal at first glance. I'd also like to show you guys an illusion called the Thatcher illusion. Here's a normal image of me. Look how hot I am. Then we flip it around and oh wow, I'm hideous. Anyone can do this. All it takes is a photo editing software. All you gotta do is flip your eyes and flip your mouth upside down and then flip that image 180 degrees. This illusion is the best supporting evidence as to how our brain just assumes a face that we're looking at is normal.
Visual Perception Theory This is what the previous phenomenons and illusions fall under. Visual perception is the ability to see, organize, and interpret one's environment, aka our brains just assuming things. If you're this deep into the video and for some reason you don't believe that our brains don't assume things for us, let's take a look at this video. This mask is not going to change in direction of rotation. However, our brains do like to assume that it's facing us. Now, there are a lot of examples of the visual perception theory, though that video was probably the easiest and best one. The way I like to explain it is just assuming. Our brains just think they know everything. I don't know why. I don't know why she thinks she knows everything. The next theory for visual perception is called the bottom-up theory, and that means understanding a concept's individual components before we understand the whole thing. For example, if you were to individually analyze my mouth and eyes in this image without me rotating it, after some time you'd be like, wait, that's not right. But that's simply too much work for us, so we'd rather much let our brains do the work for us and assume that a face is a normal face. So. To end this video off, this image is creepy because it falls under the uncanny valley. And also, he's pretty fucking ugly. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. And if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. You made it to the end of the video. You like me to some degree. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure to follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you guys next time I upload.